Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make the Decepticon logo, or insignia. Whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter, they're both the same thing. I figured it probably wouldn't be fair to make the Autobots one without making the Decepticons. If you want to make it, here's what you're going to need. You will only need these two colours. Grab yourself some black wool and grab yourself some purple wool. Once you have both of those right there and once you've figured out where you want to make it, I'll be making it right here, you'll want to kick this off by placing a single black wool on the floor, like that. Once you've placed your single black wool, this is what you want to do next. Do three up left diagonals from that black wool, so one, two, and three. Place a single block on top of that third up left diagonal. Then do two more up left diagonals, so one, and two. Go up by one on top of that second up left diagonal. Then do two more up left diagonals, so one, and two. Go up by one on top of that second up left diagonal. Then do another up left diagonal. Place one on top. Then do another up left diagonal. Place one on top. Then do another up left diagonal. And place one on top. Then do two more up left diagonals, so one and two. Place a single black wall on top of that second up left diagonal. And then do two more up left diagonals, so one and two. Go up by one on top of that second up left diagonal. And now finally, do another up left diagonal, and then go up on top of it by seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in total, that last row that you've done it wants to be a row of eight. Let me just show you what that wants to shape up to look like. So it wants to look a little bit like this. I'm aware that there was quite a few instructions there and hopefully you guys should be able to tell looking at this whether or not you've managed to get it right. So, once you've done that, and as always, pause it if necessary, of course, it's time for us to continue on. So, come up to the top of your row of eight, all the way up here where we last left off, and from this top block, do an up left diagonal. And place seven on top. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What you then want to do, once you've formed your row of eight, once you've thrown all seven blocks on top there, you want to come to the third block down from the top, which is this one, not, well, not this one, which is one, two, three, which is this one, and you want to go right of this third block by one. You then want to do three bottom right diagonals, so one, two, three. Go right of that third bottom right diagonal by two. One, two. Then do another bottom right diagonal. Go to the right by two. One, two. Then go down by three. One, two. Whoops. <laughs> two, three. You went down by three. Without the mistake, hopefully. From this third block, this bottom block, you want to go to the left by two. One, two. Then do an up left diagonal. Then go to the left by two, one, two. Then go down by two, one, two. Then do a bottom right diagonal. Go to the right by one. Then do another bottom right diagonal. And go to the right by three, one, two, three. Then go down by two, one, two. Then go to the left by three. One, two, three. Then do an up left diagonal. Go to the left by one. Then go down by two. One, two. Then do a bottom right diagonal. And go to the right of that diagonal by two. One, two. Then do another bottom right diagonal. And go to the right by three. One, two, three. Then do four bottom right diagonals, so one, two, three, and four. 
Let me just show you what that wants to shape up looking like, as we're kind of halfway through the shape that we're actually building at the moment. You guys wouldn't know it, but we are, trust me. So that is what you want to have built so far from where we last left off. Pause this if necessary, of course. Once you've taken care of that, we can now continue on. So coming back to where we just left off with these four bottom right diagonals, continuing on from this fourth bottom right diagonal, you want to do four upper right diagonals. So one, two, three, four. Go to the right of that fourth upright diagonal by three. So one, two, three. Then do another upright diagonal. And go to the right by two. One, two. Then do another upright diagonal. And go up by two. One, two. Then go to the left of that second block by one. Then do another bottom left diagonal. And go to the left of it by three. One, two, three. Then go up by two. One, two. Then go to the right by three. One, two, three. Then do an upright diagonal. Go to the right of that diagonal by one. Then do an upright diagonal. And go up by two. One, two. Then go to the left by two, one, two. Then do a bottom left diagonal. Go to the left by two, one, two. Then go up by three, one, two, three. Then go to the right by two, one, two. Then do an upright diagonal. And go to the right of that diagonal by two, one, two. Then do four upper right diagonals, so one, two, three, four. Place one block on top of that fourth upper right diagonal, but also go down by six from the upper right diagonal. So from down from the block that you've just placed one on top of, go down by six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's just have a look at that, shall we, since we've done quite a bit there. So this is what you want to have so far. As you can see, it is identical to the opposite side. And as a matter of fact, if you want to make sure that you have done right, you can just do a little quick check right there. Make sure that everything is in order, which it seems to be. Even the row of eight that we formed on the right hand side. Once you've reached this point right here, and as always, pause this if necessary, of course, it's time for us to continue on. However, we're not going to be continuing on from where we left off. We're going to come back down to where we very first started, and we're going to continue from here. The only reason for this is because I prefer to build upwards rather than downwards. Literally the only reason. So... Starting from this single block right here, this is what you want to do. Do three upright diagonals. So one, two, three. Place one on top of that third upright diagonal. Then do two more upright diagonals. So one, two. Place one on top of that second upright diagonal. Then do two more upright diagonals. So one, Two. Place one on top of that second upright diagonal. Then do another upright diagonal. Place one on top. Then do another upright diagonal. Place one on top. Then do another upright diagonal. Place one on top. Then do two more upright diagonals. And I know it's getting a little dark. Two more upright diagonals. So one, two. Place one on top of that second upright diagonal. Then do two more upright diagonals. So one and two. Place one on top of that second upright diagonal. Now do another single upright diagonal and place seven on top. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if everything's been done right, that seventh block should connect diagonally to where we were just building. And you should end up with a shape that should look a little bit like this. I realize that this is a little dark, so I'm going to be back in a moment once we have the daylight. So this is an ever so slightly clearer view of what you hopefully have just managed to make. And remember, you know if everything's went right, if that seventh block in that long row of black wall that you just placed connects diagonally to the other row of eight. As always, pause this if necessary, of course. Once you've taken care of that, we can now get cracking on. So come back down to roughly where we first started with this block right here, and you want to work your way up the left-hand side of your pixel art until you find this block, this first block in our first row of two black wool. From this wall right here, you want to do a bottom left diagonal. You then want to go down from that diagonal by one. Then go left by one. Then do an up left diagonal. And go left by one. Then do an up left diagonal. And go left by two. One, two. Then do two up left diagonals. So one and two. Go left of that second up left diagonal by one. Then do another up left diagonal. And go up by five. So one, two, three, four, five. Then do another up left diagonal. And go up by eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That eighth block should connect diagonally to this block right here. What you then want to do, after you have placed your row of 8, is this. Blocks number 7 and 6, you want to extend each of them to the right by 1, so like that. You then, starting from this block right here, block number 6, or the block that you placed right of going of block number 6, that's confusing. This block right here that I have highlighted, you want to do two bottom right diagonals from this block, so one and two. Go down from the second bottom right diagonal by one. Then do another bottom right diagonal. And go down by one. Then do another bottom right diagonal. And go down by one. Then do another bottom right diagonal. And go down by one. Then do two bottom right diagonals. So one and two. Go down from the second bottom right diagonal by one. Then do two more bottom right diagonals, so one and two. Finish this all off by going down from one from that second bottom right diagonal. Let me just show you what that all wants to end up looking like. This is how all of that pieces together. I know that that last little stretch where we have all of the diagonals may be ever so slightly hard to follow, but it should be quite easy, and if you actually look at it, quite logical to see how that all fits together. So, as always, pause this if necessary, of course. Once you've taken care of that little section right there, we're actually going to go and make the mirrored version of it on the right-hand side here. So, coming back to our starting point again, and this time working our way up the right-hand side, starting with this block right here, the first block in our little double black wall. Starting from this block right here, you want to do a bottom right diagonal. And go down from that bottom right diagonal by one. Then go right of it by one. Then do an upright diagonal. And go to the right by one. Then do another upright diagonal. And go to the right by two. One, two. Then do two upright diagonals. So one and two. Go to the right of that second upright diagonal by one. Then do another upright diagonal. And go up by five. So one, two, three, four, five. Then do another upright diagonal. And go up by eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, just like on the other side, if everything's went right, that eighth block should connect diagonally to this block right here. Once you've done your row of eight, you then want to extend blocks seven 
and six to the left each by one, like so. And now here's where this little bit of a tricky part comes in. So, starting from the lower of the blocks that you've just extended out to the left by one, you want to do two bottom left diagonals, so one and two. Then go down by one from the second bottom left diagonal. Then do another bottom left diagonal, and go down by one. Then do another bottom left diagonal, and go down by one. Then do another bottom left diagonal, and go down by one. Then do two bottom left diagonals, so one and two. Go down from the second bottom left diagonal by one. Then do two bottom left diagonals, so one and two. Finish this all off by going down from that second bottom left diagonal by one to give you something which should, in total, end up looking a little bit like this. Again, it's actually somewhat logical to see how everything pieces together if you actually look at it. And, of course, if you've managed to do the other side, and for some reason you can't manage to do this side, I don't know how that would work out exactly, you've always got the other side to take a look at, so just to look at both of them together. They are absolutely both identical, so as always, pause this if necessary, if you're still working on any of that, of course. Once you've taken care of that, however, it's now time for us to move on. We don't actually have too much of this left. We do have a little bit of detail that I've been kind of waiting on, though. Let's do that now, shall we? So, you want to work your way over to this row of three that we have here on the left-hand side. Can you guys see where that is? Hopefully it is quite obvious where this row of three is. Underneath this row of three, you want to do three purple wool directly under it, like that. You then want to do three black wool directly underneath the row of three purple. You then want to go down from the middle black wool by one with your black wool. You then want to proceed to do four bottom right diagonals from this little single black wool. So, one two, three, four. That is four bottom right diagonals from the little black wall T-shape that you formed. What you then want to do is go right of that fourth bottom right diagonal by one. Then do another bottom right diagonal. Go to the right of it by one, and now go up by two. One, two. Then do an up left diagonal, and go up by one. Then do an up left diagonal, and go to the left by three. So one, two, three. All being right, that third block should connect back to your T shape, like that. As always, pause this if necessary if you're still working on any of that, of course. Once you've taken care of that, we actually have to go ahead and do the exact same thing on the right-hand side. So coming over to the right-hand side now, again, starting with this row of three black wool, place your row of three purple directly underneath it, and then place your row of three black wool underneath your purple. Now make your little T-shape by placing the single black wool directly underneath this middle block right here. And then from the single block you want to do four bottom left diagonals, so one, two, three, and four. Now go left of that fourth bottom left diagonal by one. Then do another bottom left diagonal. Go left by one, then up by two, one, two. Then do an upright diagonal, and go up by one, then do an upright diagonal, and go to the right by three, so one, two, three, and again, all being well, all of that should connect back together like this, and give you something which should look, well, exactly like this. As always, pause this if necessary if you're still working on any of that, of course. Once you've taken care of that, however, we can continue on, or at least we would if it wasn't getting a little bit dark. I'll be back in a moment once we have the daylight back with us. Alright guys, so continuing on, you want to come all the way over to here and locate this block that I have highlighted right now. It should be pretty easy for you guys to find. 
not too difficult. Once you have found this block right here, this is what you want to do. From this block, do an upright diagonal. And go up on top of it by four. So one, two, three, four. Then, starting from the third block, the second block coming down from the top, this block right here, go to the right of this block by one. Then do three bottom right diagonals. So one, two, three. Go right of that third bottom right diagonal by four. So one, two, three, four. Then do four upright diagonals. So one, two, three, four. Go down from that fourth upright diagonal by, well, four. So one, two, three, four. Then, from that fourth block, do a bottom left diagonal. And go down from it by four. So one, two, three, four. Then, do another bottom left diagonal. And go down by three. So one, two, three. Then, do four bottom left diagonals. So one, two, three, and four. What you want to end up with is something that should look a little bit like this. I figured that I should probably show you guys how this is shaping up before we've pretty much just made the entire shape, which we almost have, by the way. So that is what you want to have so far. That's how it's piecing together. You can see our starting point and all of that. Pause this if necessary if you're still working on any of that, of course. Once you've taken care of that, however, we can get cracking. So... Coming back to where we just finished off with these four bottom left diagonals, starting from the most bottom diagonal, you want to do four up left diagonals. So one, two, three, four. Go up from that fourth up left diagonal by three. So one, two, three. Then do another up left diagonal. And go up by four. One, two, three, four. I may as well have just shown you the whole thing all together. That probably would have been a bit of a smarter idea. That's exactly what you want to have once it has all been pieced together. We actually only have one single shape left to make. Pause this if necessary if you're still working on that little section, of course. Once you're taking care of it, however, this is what you want to do. So, come down to this bottom center block that we have of the shape that we've just made. This little single black wall all by its lonesome. On top of this black wall, you want to do two purple coming up from it. So one, two, like that. You then want to do two black wall coming up from the purple. One, two. Then do an up left diagonal and go up by one. Then do another up left diagonal and go up by three. So one, two, three. Go right of that third block by four. So one, two, three, four. Go down from that fourth block by three. So one, two, three. Then do a bottom left diagonal. Go down from that diagonal by one. That is the shape complete. It should look exactly like this. Very simple. A nice little triangle shape, teardrop shape, whatever you want to call it. That's exactly what you want to have. As always, pause this if necessary, of course, once you've taken care of that, you have actually finished the entire outline of your Decepticon logo. The only thing that has to be done now is it's all got to be filled in with purple wool. And that's actually kind of tricky. I'm actually going to have to fill this in with purple wool so you guys can see, well, where the purple wool's supposed to go. Otherwise, there's a lot of sections on this pixel art that... Uh, you might accidentally fill in. There's quite a lot of empty space that you may just not realise. I'll be back in a moment once it's all filled in with purple. It might actually take quite a while. So this is what your Decepticon logo should look like once it has been completely filled in. As you guys might be able to tell now, it's a little bit ambiguous where you did and didn't actually have to add colour and there's nothing that I could have told you that I just can't show you and make it 50 times easier. So this is what your logo wants to come out looking like. Just add in all of the purple into all of the relevant colours and you will be fine. I feel so much better now that we have both this and the Autobot logo. It's been so long since I've done anything Transformers, it rarely has. So that is what you want to have. 
that is the tutorial 100% completed. Hopefully you guys had little to no trouble following it. I hope it was easy enough to follow. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.